something a little bit different with this video. So I just thought it might be uh, nice to show some of my subscribers uh, my paint studio. Um, this is where things from Nomad and from VR and anything that I've 3D printed, this is where it ends up to get painted and sprayed up. So I thought it'd be nice to show you a little bit about where things go from 3D. So this is Hellboy from the iPad. This is from Nomad Sculpt, and it was printed on um, a very cheap uh, Ender 3 Pro uh, filament-based printer. So I normally print, or most of my prints are done on, or end up looking like this, which is done on a, this was done on, I can't remember if it's a Form 2 or a, or the Phenom, I can't remember which machine it was, but basically it's a resin print and it's virtually smooth. You can't, you know, obviously this has started to be painted now, um, but, you, you know, this is what I would do with, with most prints, certainly if it's for a client and, and there's, there's holes drilled in it, holes at the back um, for drain holes. And that's how a lot of, of my prints get done. But I don't give up on filament-based printers. So I, I recently upgraded from a MakerBot to the ender um, just so as I've got another filament machine in, in the in the studio. So uh, basically print it. I did actually print this for, um, if you look, there is actually drain holes in it. So this particular model um, is was made um, or was aiming for resin. And then I just thought, right, now why not do a large larger format uh, FDM? So, and the important thing to notice is um, that with filament based printers, you, you do still get lines, you still get layering. So I always print a character like that. And that means that the, the layers come up through the face. It doesn't work like that on resin printers. If you look at, you know, some of these characters and creatures up here, these, these when they're resin, you, you have a whole different set of rules for those. But for filament, um, this is the way I've done it for years. Um, and, and basically what it means is that the striations end up working for you. So let me see if I can zoom in. You can see there on the skin that the striations are kind of working, well, they're, they're going vertically on the model. So even things like the wrinkles under the skin are better when you've done it vertically. So if I just stand him back up and you have a look at him, you can see that, that you can still see those striations, but because they're vertical, it's working as if it's muscles. Um, and you, you know, you will get problems like this here. Um, and you will get, you will still see the layering, but the, those are issues you could fill if you wanted to. And there's lots of things on the market to improve this. I mean, this has had a little bit of filling on the back where the plug holes are. Didn't do a very good job, I'm afraid. So I, I could really do with doing that again. But if you um, if you want to consider filling it, let's come over here. The light's going to strobe a little bit over this side of the room. You've got things. In fact, let me take it back because it, it's too. The lights aren't good on that side of the room. So you've got this, which is foam armor, and you you use this for things like model aircraft, and it gives a PVA coating over the top. It looks rubbish on the day that you do it because it has like a white coat, but once it's hardened. That's a really cool product for for um, for doing a little bit of the hole filling for you. It's not brilliant because it just does follow the. Eventually, as it dries, it, it it does follow the the lines, but that does help a little bit. And I used to use this a lot, which is XTC three D. Uh, it's a, quite a dangerous chemical, so you've got to be careful with it. It's, it says it's for industrial use only, as you can see, um, and that's supposed to fill in the holes a little bit now. For some commercial jobs, I have used that, but I don't. I don't really recommend anyone buying it. Um, you know, you, you might if you if you're really struggling and you've got something that's, you know, it's got to be have a really cool finish. Then have a go of it, but it, it, it's not something that that I would really stand over. I use it more on models like this. So this is a Hellboy done in plasticine or new plast, um, and as you can see, he's you wouldn't know that it's plasticine. So when you armor coat it with this stuff, that's what you get. And it is, I don't know whether you can hear it, but it certainly isn't like plasticine. So it hardens to a level where you can use it. Um, you know, and I do like working with plasticine um, and, and 
clays of that kind. My favourite clay is, it, well, I don't know whether you can see it over here, but my big stock is um, this stuff, which is Nuplast. Um, uh, sorry, not Nuplast, it's uh, NSP Medium. Um, so it's the sulphur-free Chavant clay, and I have I have tons of that uh, that I keep in the studio. Um, sorry about that light strobing again. So yeah, he's he's close now with with um, with the paint job. So I'm using a lot of these things, which are um, washes. So I I use Citadel washes quite a lot. Null Noil is one I use a lot. Well, that's just a dark color, and that goes into all of these cracks and creases. And then uh, what I normally do is do an airbrush uh, blast of, of undercoat. And then I might do quite a bit of brush work, layer it, dry it, layer it, dry it. Um, then a load of washes. And then I might go in and do like a final kind of um, dry brush effect over these sort of areas. Because at the minute I want that hair shiny black, but I wanted some detail in it. So I'm washing in different colours, different blues and oranges and greens. So that they'll pick up in certain light, they'll they'll still pick up that sort of colour. Um, I might rub him down a little bit on the back. I'm not because he, he, he's supposed to be for a, a wall, um, like a shelf item rather than a you know a freestanding. So you don't be spinning him around because I haven't prepped the back properly. Um, and I do make my own washes. As I say, I use um, this stuff here. I just use windoline. So I keep a load of this in the studio. Um, uh, I, I just buy a bottle of this every year um, and it lasts for ages. So I, I just mix that with, usually with these, which are um, Vallejo model colours or sometimes I use some of my airbrush colours. So I might do Vallejo Game Air or, you know, or even all the old Citadel ones. It doesn't really matter once you're using this stuff um, because you can, you know, it washes really well into the, into the models. Um, but yeah, he's close now, and I just thought it was really nice to to, to show you um, where this stuff from um, my iPad goes. Obviously, m you know, I iPad sculpting is fairly new um, for all of us, really. Obviously, there's Forger that's been around for quite a few years, but I haven't used it professionally. Um, but now Nomad, maybe maybe Forger sometimes, but Nomad seems to have grown to the level where I can use it as well as I use ZBrush. It's not ZBrush. I mean, don't get don't get me wrong. I wasn't saying that it is ZBrush, but it's got you know I can take stuff that I'm working on for work from ZBrush and work on it on on the go. And and I certainly when we get out of COVID, I'll be using it loads more um, on you know on journeys and flights and traveling because um, it means I carry lighter amounts of equipment then. Um, that's uh, that one in the background there. That's actually an FDM print as well. So that's come back into the shop to be to be fixed because it got smashed up. Um, I have a box next time I'll show you called the uh, the box of broken dreams. I won't show you now, um, but it's where all the models come in to be repaired and you know they they, they make their way through this kind of this loft area as they get fixed and fixed up and then painted. But I hope that's something that interests you. I'm more than happy to, to to do these kind of videos to show. I like to show what I'm working on in a different way. And it brings it to life a little bit, I think, because you can you can see what we're making on, on the iPad with Nomad and where we're going with the tutorials I'm doing. Um, and this is where I'd want people to get to, is, is making their own things and 3D printing them. And the great thing for, for us now is that this is a lot cheaper than it was when I started. So, so this machine... Um, uh, you know, if you take off the VAT in the UK, it's only like 180 quid, so maybe 200 and some 220 quid, something like that. Which I know, in 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 you know, if you haven't got that kind of money, it's it's big money. But I would have paid like two grand for that kind of machine when I was starting. So you know, it's it's a very it's a much more reasonable ho hobby to get into now. Um, and obviously, it can lead to a career, and you can end up doing this this professionally. So, but I hope you enjoyed looking at the the progress on hellboy um I, I am really impressed with with nomad because it's allowing me to do this kind of sculpt so um hopefully i'll do a lot more in the future and i'll share little updates like this so let me know if this is the kind of thing you want to see more of um, and i'm more than happy to share progress of prints and creatures and models as they make their way through the studio i mean there's absolutely loads i can show you in here that you know if you like creatures and 
characters and monsters, then this this is some you know this this room's a dream for some people. Um, and I've waited years to build up my studio. You know, I've, I've always done this kind of thing, but it's taken me a long time to build up all this equipment. Um, and I'll show you all the kind of tips and tricks that I use. Uh, I work with a lot of companies like McKinnon and Saunders over in. Um, Altrincham in the UK and you'll know their work from things like Frank and Weenie and um, Corpse Bride and stuff like that so I do a lot of CG work with them um, but their skill is all physical sculpting so obviously I have to know both sides of it um, and, it, and you know it's amazing to be able to do this stuff and, and, and be so close to it being physical um, which is which is always my passion is making things look physical or actually making them physically so uh, if you're enjoying this kind of video, then give it a thumbs up for me. It does help me get it in front of other artists and they can see the kind of stuff that we're getting up to. And if it's the kind of thing you want, comment down below and tell me if you want to see more of these kind of studio videos of where we take our stuff. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and then we can let you know when we're uploading new videos, which is still on a Wednesday and a Friday. Have a great weekend and then a great week.